Hi and welcome to my channel. Um, I'm continuing with the Rising Sun readings for the month ahead for July. Already halfway through the year. Um, so we're up to Taurus rising. Um, I recommend um, checking out the pinned comment of this um, video um, for a bit more um, extra information that will help with um, looking into this reading and the astrology connected with it for the month ahead. Um, now also I've uh, put up the um, month ahead astrology highlights video on my community tab. That's not a card reading. It's um, showing the, the different charts of tropical and sidereal so you can kind of follow along um, and see where things are and, and um, how to work with the energies. I, I walk you through that. Um, this one in particular is a little um, larger than, than last month's because it's got um, some eclipse and retrograde energies that I've, I walk you through because you know those those um, pre shadows are, are coming through as well. Um, yeah, and I also recommend jumping back into last month's astrology highlights video at about seventeen minutes into it to explain what you probably have heard by now um, about Neptune and Saturn. By now, will be retrograde, so they were in their pre shadow last month anyway. Um, yeah, so that's why they were in last month's video. So yes, yeah, so those retrograde energies, um, how to work with those two is explained in last month's video because if I explained it in this month's then it would have been even longer than it actually turned out to be. Um, anyway, long story short, um, there those videos showing the charts um, are not here at this table with the cards. Um, they're also um, on my community tab so yeah so jump into my community tab to check those out because the astrology highlights is going to help um, balance it like it's going to help you with the extra energies to work through whatever comes up in this reading as well sort of this is sort of um, what do you call it uh, a bit of an extra um, help to whatever comes through I don't know if I've explained that well at all but anyway um, I think that's about everything so I think I'll jump straight into the reading now and see what came through with your cards um, for the month ahead for July so we have sixth house for Taurus rising I don't know if I actually said this one's for Taurus rising by the way okay sixth house is in Libra for you guys okay so okay well relationships I was thinking of your descendant actually We'll see if anything comes through, but I don't know why I was focusing on your descendant. Well, Cancer's not your descendant, so <laughs> that's your third house. So we've got communication, and we have sixth house, which is Virgo themes, covered by the sign of Libra. So health, duty, service to others with relationships. How you go about your relationships, like in a healthy Virgo, dutiful, details, details kind of way. And then we've got communication again. Tenth house, so we've got Capricorn energies and now we have uh, Aquarius in your tenth, which is communities, friendships, groups. Hopes, wishes, dreams. Ooh, waning gibbous. Well, that's after the full moon, so that's further along in the month because it's coming out of um, the, the just coming out of the full moon. So you've got your full moon here 
right it's happened then so this is from the full moon there's the three day window directly after the full moon because of course as soon as the full moon happens then it moves into waning you know the waning period heading towards a new moon again um so this is a three day window uh, the full moon's on the 21st so from the 21st to the 24th um or the 20th to the 23rd depending on where you're located because over here it's the 21st that the full moon uh the full moon's going to be in sagittarius right at the very tail end of the sagittarius um constellation but it may sort of encompass a bit of the Capricorn themes because of how close to the end of Sag it is. So it may also um, bring in some sort of Sagittarius slash Capricorn um, themes. And we've got the Capricorn house there. Relationships, duty, service, health. And Cancer is in the third house. So there's communication relating to others in a healthy way in a work environment maybe whoa new moon okay hmm. well hmm because hopefully this will be up before the new moon that is in Gemini which is in your second house of um, like the Taurus house money and self-worth values luxuries um, you know a good um, healthy meal like a gourmet meal or something like that things like that what I'm trying to work out is, is it the Gemini new moon or is this moon paving the way for the following new moon? And I don't know what sign that's in next month. Um, oh, I can't work it out. Uh, yeah, well, it may be the Cancer new moon next month, but... I haven't checked, so I don't know. Um, but yes, yeah, see, it's because I'm going with sidereal, 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 um, topocentric, true sidereal. So tropical will be saying, oh, it's new moon in Cancer. It's not, it's new moon in Gemini. Because tr topocentric, true sidereal goes by the sizes of the, the actual sizes of the constellations. So placements will be different to tropical okay so we've got scorpio here eighth house well it wasn't eighth house that i was thinking of it was seventh before earlier but there was that scorpio vibe now we've got scorpio but it's in the eighth house which is not covered by scorpio for you guys it's sag being easy going sag about um, shared resources, shared income. Um, I, I think this is about work because we've got communication, communication, work, and this shared, yeah, we have to communicate with someone in order to have shared resources, whether it's money, products, time, yeah, so far I'm getting um, that it is something work-related or business-related. So New Moon in Gemini is also communication. Communicating in a new way. And this might be further, well, it will be further in the month, um, making some tweaks and changes. In the, in the first bit of um, the full moon because often when we have new things brought in or we're bringing in new things we have to then be able to um, sometimes uh, manoeuvre things in place so that this new can be experienced 
in the easiest, best possible way. Sometimes we need to make adjustments after bringing in something new. Okay, what else have we got? Venus. I think Venus is the only planet that's not going to be retrograde this year. She's going to go retrograde early next year. Well, not early. Early, mid next year. Um, so this is uh, where Taurus second house with the Gemini um, new moon and the Gemini house but I mean this is your ruling planet part of you that desires beauty success indulgence and valuables I just explained that before didn't I yeah well you pretty much know this because you are Taurus rising um, so your Venus ruled and Venus like I said is not going retrograde this year um, so being able to indulge hmm hmm now hmm because I'm <laughs> I'm thinking Venus isn't far away from Mercury right at this point in the transits now the reason I say that I have explained it in in the um, like I said in the video on the community tab for the astrology highlights for July um, Venus is very close to Mercury which will be going into his pre-shadow so uh, to be in retrograde next month early next month so there might be this um, connection there considering this month we will be having his pre-shadow from around I uh, around the uh, from the 13th or at the very least from the 20th just before the full moon but I'd say I'd say more 13th 15th onwards is the um pre-shadow but yeah Venus is very um it, it, Venus is conjunct um Mercury retrograding so I think the two of them um, will have a sort of amalgamation in a sense with the energies. Let's keep going and see what else. Neptune, ruling planet of Pisces, which is in your 11th, the Aquarius house. Um, your fantasies, yearnings, longs, longings and potential for illusion. Oh, well... Neptune is actually in retrograde. So is there some sort of illusion that needs to be cleared out? So that the new can come in, so that communication can be better. Surrounding probably assets and luxuries and, and things that you can enjoy. In some way. If it's like work related there might be some sort of I don't know some sort of you know how they have um what are they called not team building um morale building things outings whatever that sort of thing can happen sometimes or you know to, to sort of um spend how do I put it because I know when I used to do aged care there was an opportunity where we could um, further our studies but sometimes we'd have to have overnight stays somewhere you know because the actual place that was being hired for for that particular reason um, was not able we weren't able to sort of go to and from it, you know, um, 
it wasn't local, so we had to stay overnight somewhere, and that was something that was offered through the work, you know. And we, you know, we had a chance to enjoy our time together and have a bit of, you know, fun and that. Um, you know, at the dinners and everything, and then the next day we'd be back into our um, study again. So it could be something like that, you know, some sort of luxury thing that's in a balanced way that helps out the team or whatever in some way where you're still getting the work done. Uh, ten, poof, tenth house, twice. Your achievements and status in the outside world. Okay, and now <laughs> Saturn. So we've got Neptune and Saturn both retrograde. Now this is the thing a lot of people miss the opportunities that come from retrogrades. And it's really sad because a lot of people think, oh my God, retrogrades, everything's going to just be chaotic and I'll have to hide in a cave until they're not retrograde anymore. Well, these are outer planets, so they're going to be retrograde for quite a long time. Um, but here is the thing. This one's saying the part of you that accepts challenge to gain wisdom and smack bang, Saturn is in the middle of your reading right here. Now, again, they're both retrograde. Retrogrades can often um, show you opportunities where things can improve situations, so to speak, where you can find a bit of a balance. Saturn does like to go slow. He's now retrograde, so, you know. Um, and Neptune likes to go with the flow and take things easy. Then you've got your luxury. So there might be some sort of idea of enjoyment in some way. If Mercury comes through, then I'll, I'll bring that in. Um, I've only mentioned it for the time frame that's going on at the moment and because Mercury's conjunct Venus. But if Mercury comes through with any of the other cards, then I'll bring that into this. But um, so far that's what's um, coming through is some form of enjoyment, excitement, um, yeah, maybe something is a bit too dull. See, this is the thing with retrogrades as well. It could swing from too much or too little, either a lot or none at all kind of thing. So you need to find that balance. Which one is it? And Or, you know, just working on if something's already in place. Is it working in the right way? How can you tweak and change to make things work in a better way, if possible? Um, yeah, definitely. There's something to do with career or business or both. Um, and because of all the communication, I think that it's got a lot to do with others and resources. See, because you've got, you know, luxuries, valuables, indulgence, and then you've got your shared resources, both of them right next to each other. And we've got our new moon energy, you know, right near that too. Okay, Chiron healing. bringing something new in that helps heal a situation perhaps or brings some sort of healing that perhaps some people have needed that maybe you didn't know you or others needed. See, healing powers, growth, amends, release, personal development. See, personal development. Um... Yeah, I, I, personal development in the um, area of, of work. I, I, I feel that this is some sort of job related. Either it's your business or where you work at that something can really do to benefit from bringing in some new energies and, and maybe brainstorm about how to do this with others. Queen Kunk's complexity. Well, if 
if it is about, say, a team or um, employees um, or you're an employee, then it's going to be, you know, there will be complexity because um, there's... <laughs> Relationships always are, no matter how they are, the relationship is, whether it's romantic, platonic, whether it's a business, partnership, friendship, you know. Um, yeah, dealing with others is always, there's always going to be some sort of complexity because different people like different things. So that's where brainstorming comes into it. Will this work? Will that work? How about this? How about a bit of this? How about more of that? How about less of that? Da, 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 da. Well, how about adding this with that? You know, square challenge. There you go. Bam. Are you up to the challenge? Can I wouldn't say can you because I think you can. Will you? Will you um, take on the challenge? Whether you're an employee and you've got some ideas that might be coming through that you could probably suggest or whether you're the boss or whether you're you know a um, manager or something you're not the actual boss but you take responsibility for you're, you're responsible for a certain section or something but communication is a big thing that, you know, open up to see what other people have interest in or and or open up to the, the ideas you have to let others know about that so that then think the ball can start rolling about what can be brought in that will benefit everyone involved. <clears throat> Taurus, the bombshell. Well, yes, because you're Taurus rising. So this is about, this is your rising sign. So for a moment, this is the the only time it's come through with the cards. Although Venus is your ruling planet. Okay. Virgo, the alchemist. Yeah, alchemize your ideas with others. Because I think there's some sort of brainstorming that wants to come through in some way. Whether it is in a, a work situation with employees or being the employer or employee, that sort of thing. Whether it's a business. Uh, whether it's maybe a business, that, uh, brainstorming um, ideas for a customer base, maybe. Or getting customer feedback in some way. Whether or not that's reviews or whether it's just asking some questions and uh, opening the dialogue, opening the option for people to comment, even if they don't want to actually leave a review, you know, comment about certain areas, you know, so that you can then see, okay, well, will this work? Will that work? Maybe I can add this. Maybe I can take a bit further, you know, a bit off that. Or, you know, opposition, balance, balance it, balancing things out. Yes, finding a balance. Definitely communicating with others, whatever the case. Sixth house, Virgo themes again. Ah, now, I said Libra, didn't I? I was thinking um, Libra sixth. Yeah, because sixth house is here. Yeah, that's where I got confused about. Sorry, yeah, no, it was the Scorpio. I was getting confused with Scorpio being in seventh. Well, Scorpio hasn't actually come through. I mean, the Scorpio house did, but not Scorpio. Um, so even though we've got some aspects that are seeming to look tough, I think it's more... I think it's perhaps moving past any fears you might have of um, whether it's fears of whether 
someone will listen to your ideas or whether it's fears of how you feel your ideas are as in maybe you fear they're not good enough or something like that clearly they are because these are coming in saying communicate these ideas brainstorm you know alchemize craft it together brainstorm together craft it together and and come up with something really good you know um opposition square and quincunx you know they're all i think it's about the fears because saturn's in the middle right and saturn can be about your fears you know what do you fear moving forward where's your saturn placed by the way you know is your saturn in the 12th house for you 12th house would be what aries uh, hmm I don't know when Saturn would have been in Aries. It was a while ago. That's a 30 year cycle. Hmm. Where, yeah, I, I still think Neptune and Saturn, wherever they're placed, Neptune, Saturn, and Venus, actually. Oh, I know Chiron's in, in um, Pisces at the moment. Um, but yeah, in your chart, wherever Saturn, Neptune and Venus are placed might um, give you a bit more of an idea as well about what to look into. But Saturn can be about fears, right? But it doesn't want you, Saturn doesn't want you sitting in fear. The idea is that you, see, accept challenge to gain wisdom. Challenge, see, square challenge. Things are complex. They always are in any relationship, no matter what sort of, like I said earlier, what sort of um, type of relationship it is. There's always complexity in relationships. Um, but yeah, craft this idea because I pff, new moon. We don't have a complete full moon. We've got after the full moon, right? It's moving towards a new moon anyway. Um, so yeah, this is really more just giving me making any tweaks and changes once you've set things in motion and started looking into even if all you do is just start brainstorming and haven't really set anything up so to speak but i think the brainstorming is the start of it that um that you i, I think something good is really going to come from all this that, that um you're working together with others communicating brainstorming together alchemizing and crafting something that works in everyone's favor and and brings some sort of enjoyment to the situation as well okay well, these might be reversed or they they can be reversed or upright but we'll walk through that if there is <laughs> mercury okay bam well that's giving me mercury retrograde which um we're in the shadow or actually not while i'm recording at this time we're not in the shadow um i think i said earlier i'm guessing around the 13th 15th that the pre-shadow will start um definitely by the 20th it, we will be in pre-shadow of mercury retrograde mercury retrograde in leo sidereal leo which is conjunct venus so, and again, retrograde, retrograde, retrograde. That doesn't mean everything screeches to a halt. It means reviewing, revising, having another look at these areas, these themes that you can bring in, you know, going with the flow, being um, organized, being... Um, 
oh, wise wisdom being um productive um while still being able to enjoy things as well you know mercury retrograde in leo venus in leo she's not retrograde and as i said there's the amalgamation mercury and venus conjunct in leo when mercury retrogrades in leo um and leo is i would say arguably one of the easiest signs for a retrograde um, planet personally in my view um, and again fifth house is about enjoyments having fun children creativity romance romance isn't just about you know a romantic relationship romance you, you know romancing ideas you know I mean, romance, you can romance about certain things in the past. Romanticize, romanticizing, romantic. It's not always a negative. And maybe that's something too, that, that maybe there was some sort of situation in a way that you're rom romanticizing about in, in a sense that has stopped happening maybe or something like that um and needs to be reset restarted revamped revised or it could be about romance in in the sense of the ideas that that you want to bring through um to brainstorm that will be healing And this is giving me this Six of Cups in, in the Tarot as well. Because that's sort of romanticizing and um, looking into the past, but also it's the idea of creating new romantic memories, you know. Again, not necessarily in a sexual relationship, because this is about work. Um but yeah, like I was trying to explain about, you know, there's certain avenues you can go with romance in and of itself. And that's not a bad thing. Um, what's next? 11th house community. Well, this is, yeah. Hmm. Because I said about Aquarius energy in the 10th. Aquarius is in the 10th. And this doesn't surprise me that it's reversed. So I feel like there's a need to bring something fun and exciting into things. And Leo is where Mercury is going to be retrograding. And Venus also is going to be, you know, having the Leo energy as well, connecting Mercury. So there's the idea to bring that fun back in and healing for everybody shared resources sharing time together even like i said earlier and once you brainstorm and think right this is the new that we want to bring in obviously it's going to need some tweaks and changes i'm going to turn this around because i really think that um those of you who are resonating with this will be able to do that because you can put your two cents worth in, so to speak, in a productive way, like Saturn likes, methodical, productive, you know, and you've got Virgo as well. Um, Saturn, Capricorn, Virgo energies, you know, um, like to be organized and, you know, diligent. Um, it does... Virgo can be painstaking sometimes, but I don't believe that it's going to be that sort of energy for you. It's just a matter of not being fearful about putting your ideas forward and then brainstorming with whoever else is connected to this situation. 
because it's going to bring in healing. And then this, like I said, that's why I turned this around, because then you'll all be working together. See, brainstorming. There's three hands here. This is... <laughs> uh, I know I'm mentioning tarot a bit at the moment, but this is giving me three of pentacles now. You know, there's three, three hand, different hands there, all working together, doing, you know, connecting all the little bits and intricate bits and pieces, putting their best hand forward you know how the saying best foot forward best hand forward in this case but yeah working together to craft and alchemize a positive outcome mid heaven pinnacle career that's what this is about career mid heaven mid heaven is mid heaven is always going to be found smack bang around the top of the chart hence mid heaven right so it'll be either on or near the ninth or tenth house it'll be in the ninth or the tenth house technically um and then opposite that is the ic imam coley which will line up exactly wherever across from wherever the um, mid heaven is mc because the letters mc will be at the top of the chart not all charts will say I see at the bottom, but I see is your home life. It's a balance of work and home life, balance of your rising sign and your descendant. So th th there's always this idea of um, finding balance. Sorry to reach over like that. Finding balance um, in all areas. And you've got your balance card right there too, see? oppositions the opposite energies balancing those together definitely work career third house communication well again that makes me think of this one was also in reverse so again i think you can turn this around once the um once you open the doors the floodgates whatever you want to call it to do this communication and break brainstorm this also gives me the idea of Mercury retrograde. So the communication needs to be tap into the Neptune a little more to make things a bit more peaceful because Saturn can be very stern. So you can still be have the wisdom of Saturn, but go with the flow and have an easygoing energy. Venus is, you know, has her own way of being easygoing as well. Um, and in that sense, then you're working with the Mercury retrograde energies to still move forward without the difficulty in communication, if that makes sense. So sort of take it easy, take it slowly, go with the flow kind of thing. Don't get in people's faces, but at the same time, allow for people to know what ideas you have and then allow for them to offer their ideas. Again, the brainstorming thing is what I'm getting. So I've turned that around because I think, again, <coughs> oh, wow, communication. <coughs> so this has only just started coming up. So, yeah throat chakra communication well, that says communication first house arrival yeah again this is your rising sign right Taurus rising and you've got it a second time now this is also came out in reverse and I think because you haven't given you haven't perhaps shown what ideas you can bring to the table which i think you have if you don't think you have it's because you haven't given yourself the chance to consider it you you've sort of dismissed it perhaps otherwise you do have ideas you've just been fearful of either how they'll how they'll be seen or acknowledged or accepted if they will be at all um or just speaking out in general but yeah, 
yeah, it's, it, it, it needs communication needs to come through it's going to be healing even with these difficult energies which each time i'm looking at them i'm looking straight at saturn as well but i think it's more of a fear of either how others will accept your ideas if they'll accept your ideas what they'll think of them or how you'll be seen for speaking up and wanting to brainstorm don't fear it. Don't fear it because you've got your rising sign, you've got the 10th house and Saturn rules, right? Saturn's the ruling planet of um, Capricorn. Technically Capricorn didn't come through, but midheaven, 10th house and Saturn is the ruling planet of 10th house, uh, Capricorn and 10th house themes because 10th house themes are Capricorn themes, right? So you've got it hitting four times technically <clears throat> also 11th house is um in pisces for you neptune rules pisces you know the easy going go with the flow did we not get sag in some way no, I don't think so. Oh no, Sag was in the eighth. Yeah, I thought we got Sag, but I was like, ooh. <laughs> no, Sag is in the eighth. Yeah, because I was, I couldn't find it. But yeah, the easy going, go with the flow. Sag and Pisces are, are generally the most easy going, go with the flow energies. Okay, so what is your numerology? Well, you've got quite a few numerology cards done. Let's see where we go. Personal growth, bam. Seven is my favorite number. It's a lucky number. It's also mind and creativity. Purple, um, in feng shui, purple, this purple color is used as a cure for money issues. Bringing in the money. Yeah, Venus wants to help you do that. Enjoy a few luxuries. Don't be so stingy, perhaps. Self-discipline, well, yeah. So this is sort of giving me the mix, almost burnt orange, of um, base chakra and the sacral chakra, so orange and red. You know, stability, security, grounding, creativity healing which is chiron um relationships which pretty much came out straight at the start with um libra in the sixth and heart chakra color so you know healing of the heart emotional you know it doesn't have to be over emotional sometimes emotional things even in a work situation can actually be healing and fulfilling <clears throat> gee my throat's going now um four i didn't sorry again um four is the number of the builder and this is saying build <laughs> and brainstorm together one is emotional vitality and personal power four and one comes to a five which is freedom and change which wants to come through what else is there? Uh, surrender. Yeah, surrender. Surrender the fears. Let them go. And we just went through these colors. In purple, we covered that color as well. Nine, big beginnings, big endings, and spirituality. Spirituality comes with the um, Sag in the eighth. Um also big beginnings and big endings um, that we're moving into or we have already moved into the uh, pre-phase of um, the eclipses that are going to happen in um, September and October. I, I explained that in the um, chart video on the um, community tab. But yeah, again, we've got the one again, personal power. <clears throat> well, 
If something doesn't come through about the throat, I'll be surprised. Like, you know, blue throat chakra. Well, that's blue, I guess. Here, spirituality. Knight, uh, Sag in the eighth. Again, spirituality, which also is a Pisces thing. Pisces, Sag and, and Pisces. And we've got the purple again. Now we've got two sevens, mind and creativity. And whenever I see a um, one of these cards that has a master number, that gives me the idea that there's more than one person that's going to, um, because there's two of the same number, more than one person that's going to benefit from the energies, right? Two sevens comes to a five, which again is, um, did I say mind and creativity with seven? Yeah, I think I did. Um, yeah, two sevens comes to a five, which again is that freedom and change. What else have we got here? Whoa, manifestation, eight. Money and self-worth. Eight is the number of money and stability. Um, and pink is the other um, heart chakra color. Put your heart into this. Heart and soul. Soul, like Pisces, you know, Neptune Pisces. Manifestation, yay. And it's an eight year. Follow your dreams. Yes, Pisces. Dare to allow your dreams to come in, craft and alchemize them, brainstorm with others, let others know your ideas, your goals, your wishes, your dreams. Eleventh house. Um, and that's turquoise, which is a healing color. Remember Chiron, and then we've got the heart chakra again. Money and stability, and then we've got five is freedom, um, and then this is for the number of the builder. relationship change that doesn't every time i get this card i say that doesn't necessarily mean anything bad it doesn't say relationship end it just means relationship change and it looks like by brainstorming things will change in a good way that will be healing for everyone involved blue yeah right heart heart chakra uh, not heart chakra, throat chakra color i was looking at the green heart chakra again but throat chakra with the blue speaking up freedom and change and six is temporary opportunity and it's also focus detail and dignity and five and six comes to an 11 which is another master number and the, and the number of relationships so business work relationships in some way So, yeah, <clears throat> leadership. Yeah, see, your rising sign came out twice. Take the lead and start the ball rolling. Start this this um, brainstorming going. Start this idea to, or, or ideas, these ideas to be implemented or worked in some way. And so you're just doing some tweaks and changes by the time the full moon rocks up. Um, we already covered the base and um, sacral chakras about creativity and stability and grounding and and there's a heart chakra color again pink so we've doubled up with heart chakra two green two pink or oh, three pink actually right um eight money and stability one is um emotional vitality and personal power eight and one is nine big beginnings big endings spirituality Health, well, yeah, emotional health, I want to say. We've covered purple and we've covered this. Wow, this color's come through four times now. The base chakra, grounding, your roots, your security, your stability, material stability as well, your creativity, your healing. Again, Chiron, uh, relationships yeah seven the mind and creativity and i think that's a lucky number and we've got it four times now so this is four four times that this color has come through right um which is the base chakra and the sacral chakra and then we've got seven that's come through four times as well four sevens are 28 
which is one. Emotional vitality and personal power. And this is an eight, money and stability again. That's come through four times as well. One, two, three, four. Ha! And it's, wow, abundance, also pink, heart chakra. One, two, three, four, 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 four. Something's... Four, four, four. Okay, I think you need to look up, if, if you're open to it, look up the number 444. I think that's got some message for you as well. Um, yeah, the angel number or whatever they're called. Um, 444 four, four as well. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 8. 1, 2, how many eights are there? One, two, three, four. Oh, well, there's five eights. Five eights are 40. Four again. Building. Build. Build it. <laughs> build it. Create the structure. Build it together. Yes. Team building. This is what I said earlier, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so now you've, wow, you've got a few of these too. I don't know how long this is going for, so I hope it's going to not cut off. But yeah, these are the abundance messages for July. You can dance with the illusions of time and space, choosing your steps based upon things and events as they now are, or you can dance with your dreams. Remember, Pisces. Neptune, dance with your dreams. Choosing your steps based upon things and events as they will be. And I bet and I bet you can guess which steps will perpetuate today's illusions and which ones will change everything. Shall we? The universe. Dare to change everything, my friends. Because these energies are open for you to do that. Ever wonder why some of those who achieve incredible success and amass fortunes and enjoy sizzling relationships seem so unlikely? It's because intelligence, looks, even creativity come in a distant second place to believing. Achievers achieve because they believed they could and followed up with consistent baby steps and so the heavens and earth were moved. I believe in you, the universe. The universe believes in you. There you go, Taurus Rises. Baby steps, brainstorming, having a look at ideas, that, offering your ideas, seeing what others have, seeing what can work together. Baby steps. You don't have to do everything all at once. <clears throat> what does it do? Oh, sorry. What good does it do knowing approximately where the treasure lies yet never digging? Having a bank account with millions in it, but never writing a check. Or discovering the fountain of youth, but never drinking a drop. You must live the truths you discover. Discover it by brainstorming. Yes, you must break your old rules. Get out of your fear. Defy logic. Be the change. Dig, write the check and drink eternally. One little step after another. There's no other way the universe. There you go again. Two times we've said Baby steps, one little step. Doesn't have to be screaming 5,000 miles ahead. A step forward is a step in the right direction still. You want what you want because you know it's possible. If it wasn't, you wouldn't. This is powerful. Embrace it for whatever else you believe or don't believe. This belief alone can take you the distance and what you want wants you, the universe. See, what you don't believe, I think, boils down to the fears. Perhaps you're not believing in yourself and your ideas and how good they actually are. Look at this, abundance and manifestation. Bam, smack bang underneath, manifestation is abundance. Boom. Boom. 
Most don't stop to think, but both having money and not having money make fantastic adventures possible that wouldn't otherwise be possible. Same goes for having and not having anything else. Everyone's a winner in time and space, the universe. Actually, it's not that you want stuff that you don't have, but that you want stuff that you think you don't have. And the best way you can, the best way to change this is to begin thinking that you have it. As in, oh, here's my electrical, fully loaded Halbertron cloud zapper. <laughs> Rain, please. The universe. Yes, yeah, see, the drought. The drought's got to end. It's got to rain. And you're the one that can bring that rain in and water things to your advantage do not fear it you have great ideas bring them out and if you think you don't or you're not sure meditate or ask your guides ask whatever you believe in to show you to give you an idea to guide you um because sometimes it could be that suddenly we have a fantastic idea uh, while we're hearing some song, you know, even if it's a song we've heard a million times before and never got the idea before, but suddenly, boom, or we're in the middle of the shower or having a shower, you know, and suddenly an idea comes and we go, wow, okay, I can work with that. You know, or you're outside taking a walk or something and again, boom, an idea comes to you. Open up and allow it to come forward if you don't already have some ideas in the coffers, so to speak. Because the ideas are going to damn work. They're going to work in your favour. Abundance and manifestation is here for you. Um, do you know what? It's going to feel like when the day comes and everything you now want has come to pass. When you're living in total abundance, in perfect health, looking fabulous with friends and laughter. See? Team building. Um, wherever Friends and laughter wherever you go. It's going to feel like, yeah, well, of course. That's how much I know you, the universe. Leadership, yes. Take the lead in this and communicate your ideas. Okay, what do the guardian angels want you guys to know? Let's have a look at that and then we're done with the reading after that. Dear guardian angel, help me dissolve past guilt or regret. Help me to see that all is always in perfect and divine order. Help me to let go of the fear that I project on my future. There you go, boom. Um, help me to live fully within each precious moment and feel your eternal love within and around me. Help me to realize and fulfill my true potential. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Realize and fulfill your true potential. It's wanting you to do this. Take the lead in that. It's going to help your career, your work life, whether that's career as in your business, a career as in you're an employee somewhere or a career as in um, you're a boss somewhere. Whatever the case, it's, it's yeah, definitely work-related in some way. Uh, however, that resonates for you in that sense. Inspiration. A wave of inspiration and a stream of beautiful ideas are about to enter your aura. What have I been saying? Thank you, spirit. Beautiful ideas are about to enter your aura. Open up. If you haven't already got these, open up to it because it needs to come through. And it's going to be an amazing change for you and everyone involved. It really will. It is important that you trust your intuition at this time. What did I say? Pay attention to unusual thoughts that come to your mind exactly things that just go or 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 you get triggered by a song in a good way i'm talking about you know that it triggers a thought and you go hang on a minute oh or it might trigger a memory that then triggers another thought that then goes oh 
you know, your mind just goes, oh, hang on, I could use this for this, or I could maneuver this, or I could work with this, or I could offer this, you know. That's how spirit works for us, the universe or God or whatever you believe in. Um, it is important that you trust your intuition at this time. Pay attention to unusual thoughts that come to your mind and do not discount your imagination. Many wonderful ideas which have served humanity were initially scoffed at or ridiculed. Do not be afraid of that because it's not going to happen, actually, because, look, there's too much saying this is what is needed. Whatever you have locked away in your mind, unlock it. Let it out and let others know about it. Um, we, your guardian angels, will help you discover ways to apply your ideas and manifest new realities for your life. Manifest, remember, we had manif manifestation with that card and abundance. Yay, yes. Intu intuition. Trust your intuition and know that what seems logical may not necessarily be right. To answer, oh, the answer to your question, to answer your question, wow, okay. The answer to your question lies inside your heart. Okay, to answer your question, what are we going, to answer your question, don't fear be open to these thought bubbles, these thought trains, these thought lines from one thing to another because that is the answer to your question on how to move forward. The answer to your question lies inside your heart. Endless possibilities exist for you. Stop trying to work it all out by yourself. And feel your way through. See, don't try to work it out by yourself. This is about communication. You can't just be communicating on your own by yourself. You need others to communicate with to make it all, brainstorm and it all and make it all work in your favour as well as everyone else's. Um, so stop trying to work it all out and feel your way through. We, your angels, will guide you. Trust your feelings. What feels right is right. Remember, it might not be logical, but if it feels right, go. The universe is saying, go, do it, accomplish it, take the lead. This needs to happen. This is what we're trying to show you. This train of thought might not seem logical, but put it out there anyway. And then that might be what what triggers, like I said, in a good way, triggers someone else's thought process to go, oh, well, that makes me think of this. Oh, how about we add this or we maneuver that to then make it work in this way, which will then open the way to let this happen and da 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 da. Oneness. Oh, someone you dearly miss is forever present in your heart. Remember, dearest one, that even though there has been a physical parting, spiritually those we love never leave us. Creation is eternal. Nothing is ever truly missing, for all is interconnected and ultimately one. I've got a couple of things from that. Loved ones passed on are supporting this. The other thing is interconnection, ultimately one. Working together as a team, one, one team but working together to all put in your own input, your own style, your own ideas, amalgamating it. Uh, where did we have, we had um, amalgamating, what's the other, what, what was the word here? Uh, alchemizing, I think it was, alchemy, alchemizing. Yeah, alchemical, you know, all together, you know, all these different parts moving parts put it together and you've got this amazing you know machine that that will help things you know <laughs> and i hope i'm making sense but yeah hopefully this resonates it's not going to resonate for every single person but um you know see where those energies can be applied in your life at this point in this month and um yeah like i said i recommend checking the community tab 
for the um, astrology, um, covering the astrology for the month ahead that um, is with the charts that's in the uh, in the community tab and I think that will also um, give you a bit more of an idea of the energies and to work with and it might even help you get these ideas to come in you know a wave of inspiration and a stream of beautiful ideas is about to enter your aura and these ideas are going to bring they're going to manifest abundance valuables luxuries success you know money and self-worth is what i usually narrow down second house as which happens to be the taurus house and you are taurus rising so yeah and chiron remember was under there so there's a bunch of healing on offer for you and everyone else involved i think i i i get really good energies from this guys so I'm going to leave it there and wish you all the best of luck with this for July and onwards. And until next time, bye for now.